I will derive the collisional frequency and mean free path in this video. Collisional frequency is very important in chemistry. This is because if A and B react to produce A and B, they have to collide first. And the reaction rate is thus proportional to the collisional frequency between A and B. And I drew a big box here, and inside the box, I drew only one A molecule and two B molecules. We assume molecule A is traveling straight at a speed V sub A, and it has traveled for a time period delta T. Therefore, the distance it has traveled is VA times delta T. And uh, one question we have is, will A uh, collide with B1? Probably not. Will A collide with B2? Probably yes. But what if you have uh, 10 to the power of 23 B molecules inside the box? Uh, we cannot just make the decision uh, one by one. So what we do is uh, just imagine we are looking at uh, this uh, the trajectory of uh, molecule A. And, uh, and now we see uh, uh, A in the center uh, surrounded by a circle in dash line. Uh, this circle has a radius of Rb plus Ra, and the area of this circle is pi times Ra plus Rb squared. And why do we need to know this? Uh, this is because uh, mathematically, uh, if the center of a B molecule resides inside this circle, a collision may occur. If the center of a molecule B uh, resides outside this uh, dashed line circle, and then A and B are too far away from each other, and there's no collision. So the problem of collisional frequency is simplified to just uh, simply counting the number of uh, uh, Bs, molecule Bs, whose center is inside this uh, uh, dashed line circle. And because A has traveled a distance of V sub A times delta T, we can easily imagine that this trajectory is a cylinder with a length of VA times delta T and a bottom surface area of sigma. So the volume of the cylinder here is the speed of A times delta T times sigma. Again, sigma is equal to pi times the sum of Ra and Rb squared. And then how many B molecules with their center inside this cylinder? Well, we don't know that, but if we do know the number of B molecules inside this big box, and if we do know the volume of the box, and then we can get the number density of molecule B, which is uh, N sub B, the number of molecules B inside the box, divided by the volume of the box that give you the number density of B multiplied by V cylinder that will give you the number of B molecules which collide with A within a time period uh, delta T and Therefore, we just divide this uh, the number of collisions, which is also the number of uh, B molecules with the center inside the center. If we divide that by delta T, we get the collisional frequency. So uh, I'm going to just uh, write collisional frequency here equals this uh, uh, expression. And uh, we do notice that uh, delta T also appears in the volume of a cylinder, so we just cancel the delta T. We get the final expression for the collisional frequency for this uh, molecule A. What if we have many, many A's? If we have many A's, we're gonna look at the average behavior. So we will get the average collisional frequency times sigma. Right now I'm gonna replace sigma with pi 
times RA plus RB squared. And that's uh, actually not 100% accurate. We assumed that only molecules A move and molecules B do not. However, both A and B should be moving. So this uh, average speed of VA should be replaced by the average relative speed between A and B. And then the final expression is just MB over the volume of the box times the average speed, relative speed between A and B times the uh, the so-called collisional sectional area R A plus R B squared. Okay, that's the collisional frequency on average of molecule A. And now we're going to calculate the mean free path for A. Uh, the definition of mean free path is the distance uh, between the positions of A between successive collisions. So basically A collide with a molecule B and then maybe collide with another B. The distance between the two collisions is the mean free path. How do we get this mean free path? It's very simple. Given the collisional frequency, we will be able to uh, easily take its reciprocal to get the time period between two successive collisions. All right, we just take the reciprocal, and uh, I'm going to give you the reciprocal here, which is just MB over the volume of the box, the relative speed between A and B. Uh, for simplicity, uh, now I'm not going to write pi times RA plus RB squared. I'm going to just use the uh, simplified notation uh, sigma. That's the uh, uh, collision sectional area. Uh, and then this is time period multiplied by the, the speed of A. So I'm going to change the top one with the speed of A. And to get the average, I'm using the average speed of A. And this will be the expression for the mean free path of molecule A surrounded by all those B molecules. Of course, A can collide with A as well. And uh, we just have to make the corrections uh, correspondingly.